Secure file level recovery for virtual machines. The traditional way of restoring a single file, the, the, use case is, the use case is this. I have a single file on this VMware image, it's, it's backed up. I need to get that single file out of there. The traditional way that that has been done is by restoring the image, mounting the image, logging into the image, searching for the file, finding the file, moving the file, destroying the image, right? It's, you know, I really like the guy in the hat. <laughs> the point is this, why are, we, why are we going through all of that when there's a better way? A Segre used to do it this way, many of our competitors do it this way today, but the brief has changed. There are security company, there are not security company, there are security conscious organizations that want a more secure, faster, cheaper, more secure solution. And that's and that's what we've come up with. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Martin, who's kind of gonna walk you through the details of how we do it. Um, yes, yeah, so hi again, my name is Martin Vajvoda. I'm the senior software developer at Asigua, and I'll kind of explain the process of how we do it as compared to some what most companies do. Uh, so for example, um, I'm going to use the whiteboard. So we, ha we have a, uh, a production. So we have a production system or production, um, you know, some kind of system that you have. So first let's explain how um, uh, most companies do the file level restore. So what they do is, so you have a uh, storage, and uh, sorry, my handwriting is not the best, but you have, let's say, off site, where you have your uh, VMDK virtual machine stored. Uh, of course, it's encrypted, compressed, deduplicated. Now, when you wanna create, when you wanna extract a single file from it, what you gotta do is first, you gotta go through, uh, you gotta decompress, Uh, decrypt decrypt the data then mount the data again not all the companies mount the full image uh, some companies they mount partial image but there is still possible there is still ability that uh, I mean like th there is a need for mount so what they have to do is you're gonna have to have an extra storage so they mount the VMDK which is a, uh, a sorry it's So as you mount it, so you need extra storage. Uh, when, as uh, when this is mounted, it's very it's viable. I mean, like uh, anybody can third party can actually attack this because then it's not just a file that you mounted or you just you have actually exposed a partial full uh, image uh, to the hackers or potential attackers. So what happens is a uh, so now let's say you want to extract the file, so you take the file from the VMDK and you send it to the uh, destination or to the production system. But as you send the packets to the production system, so let's say those are squares represents the packets, what happens is if you restore uh, files that let's say take up a couple, uh, you know, couple hundreds of uh, megabytes or even a gigabyte, it takes time, first of all. So at that time, this image is still mounted till you finish this operation. So what happens is they, uh, not only here you require extra storage space, because you mounted it, uh, this is uh, security, there is a security issue. And of course, uh, the other thing is the time, because in order, when there is, let's say you have a virtual machine that has a terabyte, you have to decompress, decrypt, mounted that takes time before you even start restoring the file so we thought you know what why do all of this we can do it much much simpler much more secure way so what Asigra does again you have a uh, sorry I'm just gonna try to so you have a off-site again the same scenario you have a off-site uh, backup or data store and again you have your uh, VMDK 
inside there. So now what happens is when you get want to get a single file, all we do is this is this is encrypted and this is compressed. All we do, we go directly to this and we know exactly which packets contain the, the data for that particular file. So those packets, we don't mount nothing. We just send those packets directly to the production system. And then on the production systems, those packets get decompressed, decrypt, and the file is being reconstructed there. So we don't have, we don't need extra space. You don't, uh, there is no security issues. And there is pretty much, you don't waste the time of mounting, decompressing, uh, and uh, decrypting the whole image. So that's our solution. And like I said, we had a, a file level restore before, but again, uh, more and more companies, there is a, uh, there, well, there, there were some cases that companies said, okay, we cannot have this. We cannot mount it and become exposed to the third party attacks. So we said, okay, let's scrap all of this. Let's just do it like that. So basically that's our way. Uh, and it's, uh, I think it's an innovative way of doing it. And it kind of solves all kinds of other problems. So uh, that's... How do you know what packets need to be sent if you haven't decrypted it? Uh, well, that's actually, no. that's our patent. Uh, we so you're not going to tell me is what uh, you're saying. That's right. We actually failed for a patent for this. So yeah, there is a way. We don't even, we don't even store metadata. We, everything, uh, we don't store anything of which packets have to be, we don't store any of this information. So basically, we just know exactly how to go in and we know exactly where those packets are located and transfer there. Changes from a restore point or something along those lines. So, and the good thing is about it is, again, even if <laughs> those packets are being I. intercepted, the only information that you're going to intercept is just for that file, right? Just like any other case, you cannot avoid that. But the biggest thing is you don't expose partial or full machine to a third party attacks. So it's now in that process when you file a patent where you have to stay in a kind of a, it goes into a big black hole until the USP uh, uh, patent office, you know, begins to either award it or question it and test it. But the objective is to eventually, if and when it gets published, then it gets published and everybody can see what it is. So we've been told to... So you said it was a... <laughs> so, so basically, so, uh, um, uh, and again, it's, it saves uh, quite a bit of time of, of, and it solves other problems too. So um, that's all uh, from the whiteboard. Thank you, man. Right, Thanks, so Marcia. Wait, go back. You've got to have some way to transfer data. If, if, if this is coming from a database or whatever method you're using to pull it from, um, any chance of corruption or what kind of thing do you have to keep from getting whatever secret sauce you're using? in line. Uh, uh, if it has a false restore, can we get data corruption that will have to be re-indexed? Nope. Uh, no, so nope. what happens is AI. So for example, uh, if you are sending and let's say, are you referring to if I get the wrong packets or let's say it's some of the packets being last in translation or? It, just, it has to be stored somewhere. What's the chance of that? We'll call it a some kind of database, okay. just for a name, um, getting corrupted and having to be rebuilt. Um, it, um, totally off base and Again, we, it, everything, as the data is backed up to the offsite storage, right? We say, we've, uh, you know, just like us or anybody else, if the data is corrupted, right? You won't be able, you know. Not really the data, the markers no. that you use to pull. The metadata of the, of the blocks. Well, see, that presumes we're using metadata. We don't use it. metadata. So just using that as a word. I know, but we don't use any of that stuff. We don't use any, we have a um, very, um, uh, I would say not advanced algorithms, but we have some algorithms that we know how to compute this. So we don't store any information. So there is nothing to be corrupted. As long as the data is valid, you can restore a file. And it works for both NTFS system, which is the Windows, and the Linux system, which is the XT4. And not only that, but we support, we restore it completely with streams. Uh, so the, basically, no, no limits. And you can restore multiple files too. It's not just one file at a time. You can, you can select multiple files. You can select the whole image and restore it file by file.